Okay, so it turns out the plural of hypotenuse actually is hypotenuses, as funny as it sounds. It should be hypotenuse or something. Okay, well anyway, let's do some examples. Suppose we have this right triangle and we know the lengths of two of the sides. Right, and the two and four. So the opposite side to theta is two, the adjacent side to theta is four, and the hypotenuse I called C. And so this problem says find the values of the six trig functions for the angle theta. So I would just start with either sine or cosine, do those two first, and then do, derive the rest of them from those two. So solution, first I need to know what the hypo, length of the hypotenuse is. When we know the lengths of two sides, and we don't know the, the, we know it's a right triangle, but we don't know what the other two interior angles are, um, we'll use the two, two known sides to find the length of the third side uh, via the Pythagorean theorem. So that, that would say here, c squared equals four squared plus two squared. And I just took the square root of that uh, and using the positive square root because we're talking about lengths and lengths are positive or zero, they're never negative. So that's why I can do that. So I've got C equals square root of four squared plus two squared. That's the square root of 16 plus four, which is the square root of 20, which is the square root of five times four, which simplifies to two square root of five. Hopefully you can all do that, no problem. So I just would label C. I would usually write it on the same picture, but just for clarity here, I drew another picture and wrote in the length of the hypotenuse. Now that we know the lengths of all three sides and we know it's a right triangle, we can find all the, the values of all the trig functions for theta. So we'll start with sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be two over two root five which is one over square root of five. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four over two square root of five. And that gives me, simplifies to two over square root of five. You can leave the radical and the denominator is perfectly fine. Only rationalize it if it reduces or if you're trying to add it to an, or subtract it from another radical. Okay, so tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. So that's pretty easy to read off of the, off of the triangle. So opposite over adjacent is two fourths, which is one half. You could also take sine over cosine. You'd have to flip the cosine upside down, which is actually the secant and multiply. Square root of fives will cancel and you get one half. Maybe you can see that. Cosecant theta is one over sine theta, so I don't even look at the triangle. I just do the reciprocal of sine theta, which is square root of five. And then secant theta, and I always do them this in this, kind of in this order where the secant and cosine are in the same line, and sine and cosecant are in the same line because those are reciprocals of each other. And that way it helps you to remember that fact. And it's also easy to compute, you just take the Previous one, and flip it upside down. So cos, it's cosine theta, its reciprocal is secant theta, and that's square root of five over two. And cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta, which is just two, two over one, which is two. Okay, so that's uh, how you find all six of those. And there's several exercises where you, where you need to do this.